German company which specializes in foundation engineering and this BIMO model is of one of their bigger pieces of equipment. It consists of an MC96 crawler crane and a BC35 trench cutter and the parts come in separate boxes which suggest they might be available separately at some point in the future. The first good thing to see is a decent instruction manual and it's got a full parts list which is always helpful and there are written instructions in both German and English. There are also a set of detailed pictures, although it would have been helpful to have had a big picture of the completed model. But overall it's good to have a decent instruction manual. The two sets of trays are factory sealed and here's the one for the M96 crawler crane. And here's the one for the BC35 trench cutter. There was only one issue getting the model out of the box and that's the mirror on the cab had broken off. But that's an easy fix with our old friend Sue Perglue. For the assembly there's plenty to do but we'll start by taking off the plastic side panel and that gives us access to the keys that drive the winches. This is a neat solution that avoids having holes in the body and we can start by taking off thread for the luffing winch. We can then start reeving up the A-frame which is actually not too difficult on this model and then tie it off at the end. If you like putting small things into holes you'll have no problem with this part. We'll start by displaying the model in transport mode but sadly there's not enough thread on the drum to reeve it up fully. We'll carry on in cheat mode and install the luffing boom stops which consists of a spring and then a plunger which goes in. And that can then be left to rest in position. It should be possible to connect the A-frame directly to the boom foot. But that's not been modelled correctly so we have to improvise and use a short length of chain. With the A-frame connected to the boom then it's pretty much ready to be displayed in transport mode. And here comes the helicopter low loader ready to pick it up. Here we see the patented giant cranes etc hand crane and it makes light work of putting the MC96 on the low loader. For the rest of the assembly it's worth having a small bowl because there are some very small parts to look after. And the first ones to use are tiny nuts and bolts to join up the boom sections. The boom is metal and it's cast to good tolerances so the sections join up easily. And for the most part it's simple to push the bolts through the holes. Special tools are supplied to join up the nuts and bolts. These work in the usual way to secure the connections and the best advice is not to tighten up the nuts and bolts too tightly. Once the boom is joined up the next step is to join up the pendants and these come in lengths to match the boom sections. These are joined up by using a small connector which pushes through the big loop at one end of the pendant. You can then offer the connector up either to another pendant or to the connection point on the A-frame. Once it's in place you then secure it using one of the nuts and bolts. Let's now turn to weightier matters and add on the counterweight at the back. The main counterweight is a single block which hooks over at the end. And now we'll winch up the boom. But as you see here because the boom is metal the model does overbalance until the boom is raised and when that's done you can install the boom stops in their runners. We will configure the MC96 as a crane first, so let's take the thread off of one of the winches. And that goes to the boom top, where the main hook can be reeved. That's a fairly simple job, and when it's done, the loose end can be snipped off to make it look good. With the crane rigged, we can add on some of the final detailing. And that includes this entry plate for the hydraulic connections, although it's a bit loose fitting. And there's also a camera and light assembly which presses into place. At the rear there's a thin plastic exhaust pipe and that also clips in. And if we're not driving the crane anymore we can reattach the side plate. Also provided with the model are some big walkways which are optional on the real crane. These are metal and they're a push fit connection. After that there are some more handrails to fit around the top of the body although these are fairly loose fitting so it's hard to get them to stay straight. 
Lastly, there's some additional counterweight to add, but you have to be careful because it's loose and easily knocked off. With that, the MC96 is rigged as a crane. So with it fully rigged, let's run the tape over it and see how big it is. And it's about 34 inches or 87 centimeters tall. To add the trench cutter, you need to change the boom head for a special part. And also insert the frame that holds the hose guides. And with the magic that is cranes etc, here it is already done, although there is a problem getting one of the nuts and bolts to be done up because of the proximity of parts. To suspend the trench cutter, two winch lines are used, so here is the second one being put over the boom head. And the two ends get tied to the top of the trench cutter. That's easy to do and there's a nice little sliding cover which covers up the tied off ends. Next up is to add the wheels which support the hoses and cables. And there are two of them, each supported by a thread from small winches. That thread is then run to the top and is then tied off supporting the big wheels. It's back to the bottom and we'll now make the second connection of the frame that holds the hose guides. And there is a problem here because the bolts that are supplied with the model are not long enough to go through and have a nut put on the end. And that is awkward because the bottom connection does tend to break loose. There's another guide wheel to attach at the bottom for the hydraulic lines. The hose can then be put over the wheels, but the material used is much too stiff, so it's hard to get it to hang naturally. The hydraulic hoses are wire, so they're easier to bend into a natural shape. And the separate ends get fed through the entry plate that goes onto the body. Once that's done, you can tuck the loose ends into the body and then reattach the plate. Although as it's not a firm clip, it tends to spring off. With that done, the assembly of the trench cutter is complete. Let's give it a quick height check, and to the top it's 31 inches or about 80 centimeters. Time for a look at some of the detail, and the metal crawler tracks have detailed pads. And the track frames are quite detailed too, but they have no working rollers. The cab is plastic, but it does have good interior detail, and there are small graphics on the body. The railings on the walkway seem to be a bit too high compared to those on the real machine. But the boom sections are nice because they have mesh walkways. The wire pendants were reasonably accurately made, but they didn't have quite the same tension in each one. And it's a pity that the equaliser wasn't modelled with a pivot pin to even up the tension. The boom head for the trench cutter is an entirely plastic piece. The wheel assemblies for the hoses are also entirely plastic parts. The frame of the trench cutter is metal and nicely detailed, but the internal parts are plastic, such as this mud pump. The cutter wheels are also plastic, but again that does allow some fine detail. through some of the features we haven't looked at and firstly the crawler tracks are too stiff to roll on a smooth surface but they move easily by hand and if you put the crane on a rough surface there's no problem with the tracks rolling. One nice feature of the crawler track frames is that they are extendable so the model can be configured in transport or working configuration. The only small issue is that the extending mechanism is a bit loose. Rotating the crane works pretty much as you'd expect. It's smooth but moderately stiff but there's no rocking so it has a stable feel. Moving on to the walkways and they have a small feature which is the stairs at the end can be folded down. So there's no excuse for moaning from the Cranes Etc team members. Moving on to the BC35 and the cutter wheels all rotate freely. And although the trench cutter is a fairly heavy part, you can lift it using the two winches. And although they don't have a positive brake action, there's enough friction for them to hold the trench cutter up off the ground. In summary, this is certainly an interesting model from BIMO. It is flexible in the configuration and the complexity of the machine is captured well. One or two aspects of the quality and the material choices are not the best, but if you set those aside, overall the model is good enough to highly recommend. Thank you.